Dear students, uh, welcome and thank you for tuning in to this video. This is the second video of lecture two of our uh, product design development course. The previous video, I provided a general description of the phases that we are uh, going to implement in something called the generic product development process. I want to go more in details into each of these phases and explain what are the activities and the tasks we will be performing in each one of these phases, starting from the planning phase, reaching up to the production ramp up phase. In uh, the first phase, in the planning phase, we call it phase zero, in which you will be doing opportunity identification activities. So you and your team will be uh, identifying users. Also, you will be uh, creating surveys to collect information and feedback. At the end of this uh, opportunity identification stage, you will be able to write uh, your mission statement and you will be able to identify the goals based on the feedback we get from the users and you will be able to create a set of assumptions and constraints for your product based on your mission statement and the feedback that we are getting from uh, the users. It's a very important uh, phase, it's going to take some time. It's really exciting how we, you get information from users and uh, to create your mission statements, identify goals, and then um, create a list of assumptions and constraints. Um, the following phase is going to be the const concept development. And this is actually the crown jewel of the product design development process um, and in this phase we will um, be able to uh, look at the needs uh, based on the surveys and the feedback we collected from the users we will categorize these needs we're going to score them and see which one are the which are the ones that we would like to focus on based on our experience and background and the feasibility that we can address these needs uh, we're going to uh, create alternative uh, concepts and um, we're going to create probably 20 different concepts. So you will look at the alternatives. Uh, we, we, as engineers, we're going to create uh, as many concepts, as fundamentally different concepts as possible. I always say that anyone can do design and development, but if you have an engineer with you um, or are you are an engineer, you, will, uh, you are equipped with a, a, a skill set that will allow you to create a lot of concepts. We will look at the form and the function of the, you know, these are the things that will be different in um, our designs and concepts. Uh, we will start our feature, specific, feature specifications uh, and we will look at the competitors and we will look a little bit on the economy of how, uh, how much is going to cost us to uh, buy the materials for the concepts that we, the concept that we're going to select. So in concept, concept development, um, we are going to create a lot of concepts and we will going to test them and uh, rank them and select one of them to move forward to the next stage where we're going to start uh, looking in the system level design. We will look at the architecture of the product. Uh, we will decompose the product uh, or the idea that we have into sub-components. Um, and I always say that we would like to find design products for the course that are less than 10 um, parts or 10 um, components. Um, ideally, it will be five. Uh, we will create a preliminary design. Uh, we will assign responsibilities to different um, members of the team. We will assemble, uh, you know, we decompose the product into sub-component. And then after we uh, get into the design and the details, we will assemble our uh, components again. We will draw a um, geometric layout. There are specific um, layouts that we people use we're going to look at them and then we will do the functional specifications and we will uh, look at the flow diagram of how are we going to move from the system level design to the following uh, phases after the system level design it, it's a lot of specifications here um, and um, we, we're going to talk about them more later when we reach this point uh, you need to identify uh, something we call uh, target specifications and ideal specifications and we're going to talk about these in, in more details. Uh, and that's the detailed design uh, phase. You're now going to identify your geometry, you will select the materials and you will uh, create a material list and we're going to see what the prices, uh, tolerances, um, unique and standard parts. We're going to look at the uh, ideal values and um, what parts are we going to be buying or which parts are we going to be building using 3D printers. Uh, we will put a process plan uh, to 
manufacture for manufacturing uh, we're going to have our documentations drawing uh, and all, everything will be saved as a hard copy or on pc files uh, specifications of parts at this stage we will be looking at um, the marginal and ideal specifications uh, we will select the materials based on the prices as i mentioned before uh, we will do cost analysis and we will talk about the robust performance of uh, the design so we need to address that that uh, at this stage the following stage will be testing and refinement so we're going to uh, build um, either we build a prototype or we have some drawings infographics uh, and we need to go back to the users so we will do construction we need to evaluate and the evaluation we have different um, people who are going to be part of the evaluation process uh, as i mentioned we can build our prototype at this stage we should be able to be build, building our prototype at this stage uh, what how it works uh, customer needs you know we're going to give it to people to try it and give us feedback uh, beta prototype uh, performance and reliability we're not going to do this in the class but uh, we're going to focus more on the alpha prototype. A beta prototype is a prototype that is ready to be used by customers. We are going to focus more on the design um, and uh, you know, uh, having something functional, but not ready for um, end user uh, you know, experiences. Last stage will be production ramp up. So the product is made now and we're going to train people how to use it production processes we go someone is going to help us um, as i mentioned one of the member in the previous videos one of the team members should be uh, someone who is knowledgeable in manufacturing uh, in order to be able to allow us to uh, look at the production processes and what do we need um, who are we going to identify who are our preferred customers uh, we will look at the ongoing production launching and post launch project uh, we are not going in our class we're going to be focusing uh, our work on creating an alpha prototype but it will be really um, helpful and useful to have some documentation about the production ramp up uh, phase so i hope that you have now an idea about the generic product uh, development process and when we mean what, what do you mean by generic that everybody uh, this is the main framework and uh, but we have vari uh, variants of on the generic process uh, for example you will have technology push uh, development processes you will have process intensive development uh, you have customization development processes and others we're going to discuss them uh, more in details in the following uh, lectures and videos um, i will stop here in the third video for of this lecture we're going to talk about the concept development which is the front end the process and the reasons for well-defined and structured development uh, process. Thank you for watching. Until the next video. Bye.